Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a Hero Builds video. I am Silfin. In this video, we're taking a look at Chimera, and a very complicated build I have for him. So, I have uh, changed up my videos quite a bit, and now I'm on this side. Uh, my color keeps changing, so hopefully it doesn't look too bad. So, take a look at this build. It's completely cards and we are doing a swap out like mad. It is a very complicated um, build that hopefully makes sense to you in the end. So here we go, let's go with our Brawler's Key here, ladies and gentlemen, right off the bat. I want those Harvesters, I want that damage. Um, why I didn't go for a Health Potion or anything like that, simply because, uh, well, Chimera has um, sustain. He has sustain with his passive ability, his E, Spirit Regeneration. Passive, it's whenever he basic attacks, he gets uh, a, a health regen boost every time he does. So the longer he can fight, the, lo the longer he can build his sustain here. If you look right down, right above my health there, you can see that uh, we are at 3.7, 4.1, 4.5 health regen, 4.9, etc. You get the point. Eventually, he becomes absolutely monstrous um, if you can stay in the fight long enough. That is why it's so rewarding for him when you build tanky with him. It's because if he can stay in a fight long enough to build that crazy amount of sustain, he, well, just can be an absolute monster. Um, he's really scary. It's a very, very good solo hero a very good 1v1 but in the right situation when he can come in during a team fight and pick somebody off he's a monster quite quite literally this red buff is really going to help us here with some bonus damage here in the early game uh, also going to really enable me to be a good ganking hero coming in from the sides but it looks like these lanes are actually doing quite well for themselves so that is definitely a good start here for this early lane phase now the next ability we get was is our Q, but if you haven't played him before, it's called Unleash. Pack attack speed is maxed for the next five attacks within five seconds. As you saw there, I killed the, that, that one minion very quickly with five very quick basic attacks. It's a great, it's a great ability to actually initiate with a uh, to, well, initiate um, in, in an engagement because you get five basic attacks off really quickly, obviously doing some very good uh, damage that more often than not actually is pretty scary for the enemy team, so there is that effect, but also primarily get that health regen right away. As you can see, look at our mana, it's perfectly fine. More importantly, look at our health. So very good jungling hero here. Uh, what we are going to do is we're going to get this right harvester, go right across the jungle here to our other harvester, get that get that harvester, get the two white camps. We should be at six card power. We should be at close to level five. Um, and we'll just have to see. If we do get a good gank here, um, I should be able to get to level five. So you know what? Let's say oh, on my way left, um, I might be able to... Let's see here. Uh, he's come for to retreat. Yeah, he has no mana, so not much he can do there to help me help me slow down. That Decker is going to use her rocket dudes. Wait. The last ability of Chimeras is very powerful. It's called Ambush. You leap to an enemy hero briefly, uh, stunning and dealing 43 physical damage in a small AoE. So if you can just isolate a enemy hero that happens to be around their teammates, you can really get some uh, a fair amount of damage off on the enemy team. It's primarily just used for that gap closer. So obviously it's great for initiating because you can initiate on an enemy hero, but in order to disengage with it, you need an enemy hero that's in a position for you to disengage too. So not really the greatest disengage tool. So he really is very just He's pretty much all-in. He's a all-in monster, really. So we're going to get his, uh, la uh, his last ability, his ultimate here, called Call. A uh, very scary... <laughs> a very scary um, ability here. Root, root, and do 326 physical damage to an enemy hero. 
nearby enemy heroes are displaced. They're kind of shot back a little bit and get 60% max movement speed to the low for three seconds. So you can do a lot with that, do a lot of damage, initiate with it, get a huge, big, huge burst damage with your key, with your ultimate into your Q. Very, very uh, good. So Brawler's Key, six card power. I would prefer to have another basic, mi or sorry, a minor strike, but I don't have enough minor strike. So I'm gonna finish this off and then go into our Guardian's Ward. Wards are absolutely crucial, especially as a jungler that you can just put wards all over the place, give that vision to your enemy team. While you are in the jungle, um, the value of your wards can almost act as another player. Like really, that is how important um, vision is. So ladies and gentlemen, this might be an opportunity for a gank, but I don't quite think so. They were pushed up here, but the Egan Scorch is such a lane bully. He was able to um, well push them back quite a bit. Now at the six minute mark, you can get the outside harvesters. Um, the orb prime harvester is, I believe, at nine minutes. So you can see there, I believe it is going to be nine minutes. So get that outside harvest harvester. Need to definitely here get a good economical advantage over the enemy team. Uh, always taking out the enemy wards as much as possible. Now that that Iggy and Scorch has all of the vision that he absolutely needs there, uh, he'll be very, very strong. I could get this black buff, and you know what? I am actually going to do this. What the black buff does, in case you aren't familiar, is it simply gives you bonus damage versus structures. So one of these lane pushers would be actually very useful to uh, get something like that. But what I can do as well is actually uh, go into the enemy jungle and actually destroy their tower with it. So, in terms of uh, skill priorities here, I'm going to focus on on my E and my Q. So, oh, let's see here. Let's actually... What I want to do here is I want to jump on this sparrow, totally annihilate the snot out of her, saving our Iggy and Scorch. There we go, very nicely done. And now that we know that two of the enemy team are back in base there, uh, I'm going to... Yeah, so that team fight there is degenerating. So let's go right into... Oh, come on, guys, win. We're going to go right into the enemy territory here, be very aggressive. And actually, with this black buff, we'll be able to take out this harvester so easily. Look at that damage, completely destroying the snot out of them. Wow. That is the bonus of, um, of, of that harvester kill. Now that we have this domination here, I'm going to very quickly take out their three point uh, lane minions here, or these, uh, sorry, jungle minions, and then actually join my Egan Scorch to use this black buff to take down that talent. Look at where we are, ladies and gentlemen, getting that harvester in their enemy jungle, being very aggressive. These three card points here will be able to get this um, fully upgraded bonus very quickly, and now we're going into something I'm not entirely sold on, but I'm trying. We are going for crit chance in this build. So why are we going to go for attack for um, crit? Simply because I, I feel like there are is a significant diminishing returns with attack speed for Chimera because you have, because you have that, um, your Q because you, you you have that Q you have incredible attack speed already and the card bonus from, um, from that is very very, um, especially the, um, sorry. I was just very excited about totally dominating that um, Sparrow there. <laughs> um, there's such a d diminishing returns in general for, for the character, especially in terms of his Q, but his Q also has reduced scaling from, um, from attack speed. So with that in mind, I'm trying to do a crit build, simply because with your Q, I think that you can have enough burst damage to really just deal enough. So what we're doing is something very complicated here. We are uh, getting low low point upgrade cards first and then trying to as much as possible upgrade them later on. So here we go. We already have 15% crit chance already with uh, how, with 21 card power. We have three um, 
We have three fully upgraded bonuses already, and the Splash Fire Piston, as you can see, has two one-point cards and then another two. So, very strong. Hopefully, ladies and gentlemen, this uh, will enable us to get an advantage as soon as possible, and then we can later on replace them with cards that, um, you know, actually suit the final oh, end build. All right, let's see if we can take out this Decker absolutely quickly. Come on, where's my leap? That is the issue with upgrading it, ladies and gentlemen, is, um, wow, I just apparently want to be in uh, fence with Decker and I, as I juke out her basic attacks. Um, the issue with not upgrading your right click is that you simply um, don't have that leap range that you would otherwise have. Upgrading your leap, I believe, increases the range, or sorry, your ambush. Um, and simply when you don't upgrade it, you don't have that range. So we, it seems like we definitely have a <laughs> harvester um, advantage over the enemy team. Hopefully that will slowly build us up so we definitely have a uh, advantage in the end game and in late game as well. Kind of doing a, a late game sort of play style here, going heavily into these into these uh, lane minions and the jungles, as you can see, we still have that right, uh, or sorry, that left <laughs> uh, harvester in the enemy jungle. So now, however, I have to be careful. If I spend too much time in the jungle, I won't be using that um, advantage I have over the enemy team to great use. So what I'm going to do here is finish off this. Um, this there we go. Finish off that um, Narbash. Now we should definitely be able to push this mid lane. And because of uh, Chimera's strong basic attack, we should be able to take down this tower. No problem. Yeah, good minion wave. Yeah, so this tower is definitely done. I'm not too concerned about this Murdoch. I'm just going to duke his basic attack like nobody's business. And then go back, get out of here. Uh, and you spend these six card time hard points. How are we going to do that? Like I said, going to get this flash fire piston. Look at that. Fully upgrading that flash fire piston. Now we are going to go into the little bit of tank. We have four fully upgraded bonuses already, and I've made it so that that's all very pertinent, all very relevant to exactly what we want. Now, do have two card power. It could go into this red eye nitro, but that is a, going to be our late game card. Actually, that's coming afterwards. Um, <laughs> after we get um, An enemy has wait, what? I might have, did I mess something up here? I might have messed something up, I'm not sure, but we're going to see um, if this still works. My notes are contradictory to what I see in my uh, deck build. We already gained uh, card points, so yeah, there we go. So we have this little bit of attack speed, and it's going to just help. I mean, attack speed is good. Getting a little bit is very powerful because it has a relativistic effect. So now we have to see what the enemy team does. Energy damage, physical, physical, physical energy. So we have a tank and support that are physical. So, uh, support, another support that's energy. So really, it's physical and energy. But... There's still more, uh, there's three physical, two energy, so, um, you know, let's, yeah, let's do uh, physical, so we're going to do physical armor here, going to go for the one that has the least amount of, yeah, so it's, it's going to be this, the spiked bone plate, we're definitely going to get that here, in here, and go in for a guard trying to get, um, still upgrading that damage that we want um, to really help us get the advantage as much as possible, as soon as possible, but also getting that guard, that tanky fighter part of this build. So there's a team fight here in the mid lane. I'm going to be risky. Ooh, he definitely went on by. I'm going to, oh shoot. Oh, let's see if I can make something happen. Yay! There we go. Secure a kill and then get out of here. Make sure that we're trying to build our basic attacks here and get that health regen. The, that's the issue with uh, trying to be a little bit of, of an assassin with, um, with, uh, with Chimera is that he simply, um, his passive works really well the longer you are in a team fight. So there we go, try to get that into the queue. Totally demolished. 
awesome, awesome. You can see that we have a monstrous amount of damage and attack speed, and those those um, all fully upgraded bonuses are very powerful in the early game. Remember, those fully upgraded bonuses are only you know six points, six points of, of something. It's not that much. So getting six points for fully upgraded bonuses in the late game does not have much value. So trying to get those in the early game using those those one point upgrades to get those quickly and then replacing them with uh, higher pointed cards later on is definitely a very very sound strategy that I'm trying to adopt more and more. So we're going to try here and see what happens if we can we out sustain a rampage. Oh, oh so close. If I uh, got that leap I would have been able to finish them off definitely. Because that does have that stun, it would have stunned him, and then my ultimate would have finished him off. Um, I wanted to see if I could, um, if I could out sustain a rampage, uh, even th through his ultimate. Because I don't think he's he's going to be doing that much damage, so I could have certainly tried that. Using that <laughs> harvester key that we still have, uh, just because it's still good here. I'm gonna here. I'm gonna tank a little bit for um, Yoshi's. Here, let's see if we can go in like a big monster here. Leap onto this. Oh, wrong person! Uh, not enough mana. Ooh, as long as I keep basically attacking on something, but I'm not. So let's definitely get out of here. See if uh, my... Yep, I could be of some use here to be able to finish off this sparrow! Ooh, there we go. Woohoo! Get out of here. Oh, I could actually go in again on this Decker. I'm gonna wait for my Q actually, uh, but that Murdoch probably can really, 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 really take me out. Let's see if I can be surprising here. Oh, no. Okay, no, let's. Oh, no mana, no mana, no mana, no mana. I forgot I didn't have mana. Uh oh. There you go. That seals my death here. Uh, if, holy smokes, I do a lot of damage. Um, wow. I didn't think I would be able to kill that, um, that Decker so fast. I am very much underestimating in my mind what this build is doing. I think we have really underestimated these fully upgraded bonuses and just how powerful this approach is. So here we go, finishing off this spiked bone plate. Then we're going into a... Uh, it, sa I, it says the impact hammer. It says the impact hammer. This is apparently my late game card that replaced the flat fire piston and then I get the this later on. Shoot. I should have figured this out sorry, before. Oh, yes! Okay, sorry. Um, the Impact Hammer is going to replace the Spear of the Rift Runner. It's a little bit better. It's a little bit better. Uh, you can see that we have two one-point upgrades and then a two-point upgrade. This is just a little bit better. I would have preferred to upgrade it more um, and have this as with all one-point upgrades, but yeah, so that made it a little bit more clear. Sorry about that. This Impact Hammer replaces this Spear of the Rift Runner because we can do this, and it still it adds up in the end to be a little bit better than that Spear of the Rift Runner. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's be cheeky here. Let's see if we can t take out this Sparrow, no problem. Right click into my ultimate, followed by up the Q. There is the combo, ladies and gentlemen, with that spiked bone plate, able to completely annihilate her. Check that out. That is what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. That is what I'm talking about. The spiked bone plate was exactly why... Spiked? Spoked? What's a spoke? Um, <laughs> spiked, well, I know what it spoke. But spiked bone plate, that is exactly why we got that. A sparrow, look at the absolutely no damage you did. 200 damage? Like, there we go. You are a monster in this build. I think that is exactly what Epic Games wanted Chimera to be. Exactly what you saw there. Hey, come on now. Unless it's just bugged out for a second. But uh, yeah, so just continuing this domination of the enemy team with um, with the economy, with the kind of roaming presence. I haven't done too, too much. My, my friendly team, I need to give them credit, have been an amazing reactive team here, taking care of the lanes, not letting the enemy team getting um, any tower advantages. So really it's up to them. Kudos. Really, really, really kudos to them for sure. All right, let's see what we can do to a Decker here. Let's see the ultimate here stunned her, but she definitely is tanky. Um, very nice job there. Look at that. She has to be tanky here. Um, 
No! What happened? That was very strange. That was very strange. Really didn't seem like they did much damage at all. My ultimate did go off, right? So I'm not sure here. So let's go back and spend these nine card points. Now, what is next? <laughs> Impact Hammer replaces the Spear of the Rift on a Spiked Bone Plate. Yes, though the other one, we are now going into the off type. So we got the Spiked Bone Plate. Now we go into the Thorned Green Weave. Uh, the, the good thing about this is that it still gives us damage it still gave us 32 damage like that's a good really good amount but now we have that tankiness we have that resistance um to the enemy damage so now i am really really comfortable with being in these team fights uh, much more so that is exactly what i'm going to do um with that said I think I'm going to completely contradict myself. Um, I really appreciate how well my team is playing together, so they can definitely be a very good foursome while I push up this right lane. I'm going to push up the right lane just because it's at our tower. Uh, get the black, or sorry, the red buff uh, before I do that and just really push that lane just so we can get um, see these lanes pushed up so we can actually, you know, rotate and get an uh, inhibitor pick. All right, we are converging a mid lane. I'm definitely going for this decker. Okay, nope. Um, and there we go. <laughs> a lot of damage. A rampage is definitely not going for a. Oh, he is. Oh, just he doesn't have physical. Yeah, he doesn't have physical resistance yet. So, oh, this Murdoch, you are done, my friend. There's the combo. Wow. Oh. What a great build, ladies and gentlemen. And it's only going to get bigger. Better. We have yet to get... Um, we have yet to get to that Nitro, which is all three-point upgrades. Uh, we have yet to get... Ooh, this... Ooh, I think this Decker is going to be able to... Ooh, not so much. Look, can I kill her before? <laughs> yes, I can. Oh, my goodness. A bonus movement speed from the red buff. The damage from the red buff. Just crazy. Um... I think at this point we have an incredible advantage over the enemy team. Just crazy with that uh, ability of of Chimera to just be all over the place in terms of the jungle, uh, warding off the jungle. I've been doing a very good job of that just because it's just been too easy to uh, rotate to get good picks here on the enemy team. So here's that. Let's take out these minions here. I want to level up. And at least should try to show you I'm um, a part of the build as well. Um, can I tank? Can I tank an inhibitor though? That is the question. So let's go in on this Decker here. Um, for some reason she is not taking that much damage from me. I think she just has a lot of health. So let's see how much regeneration I can get. Let's be really ballsy here. Let's be ballsy. Let's be ballsy. Let's go in. If I can continue. Oh my god, that damage. Oh, here, let's keep the 29, 32, 32 damage, holy smokes, 34, 36, that is game, wow, god, I hope this was as exciting for you as it was for me, what a build, holy smokes, holy smokes, to be honest, I haven't really noticed the crit, to be honest with you, I haven't noticed that yet, um, um, but still, it's just reduced this monstrous amounts of damage anyway, so. Holy smokes! Oh, I'm so excited! This is why I play this game! Crazy! I mean, yes, we did win by, we did, you know, I mean, like, steamroll them, but, uh, uh, what? Sparrow, what build is that? <laughs> 21. 21, uh, 33, 48% crit. Oh, God. All right, let's take a look at our build. Not, not that Sparrows. Okay, so the theme of this build is getting as many fully upgraded cards as possible um, and upgrading them with one-point cards. Doing that, getting, I mean, and there's lots of cards that have fully upgraded bonuses that give you exactly what you want. Like, you, you, it's not like there's a compromise there at all. Um, so that is it. And then you generally, I mean, well, no, you, at the end game, late mid game, uh, at the end game, you replace those cards with better ones, with three point upgrades, 
uh, with more with things that are more relevant to that late game. Because the late game is so volatile with carries doing their insane damage, and just everybody doing the insane damage and people uh, generally having, you know, armor at that point, especially tanks, um, that's where that's where you need the power. So that is it. So generally uh, speaking here, we are going to, well, no, this is, this is the build order. We're going to start with the Brawler's Key, giving us those two, um, those two keys that we want to get right at the early game. Perfect card with his regeneration. You don't have to worry at all about uh, health. So you just get your passive um, right off the bat and you can clear the, all of your jungles, get your two harvesters right off the bat. At that point, you have six card power, hopefully level five, and you can go back. Then you get the Guardians, fully upgrade that, get the Guardians ward. This ward, absolutely incredible, right? Vision is totally underrated. Always get this, keep it right to the end. There you go. Uh, that Miner's Strike is very good. That two lesser health and the 100 health on the Guardian's Ward, don't underestimate that. 300 health at the early game, when people are doing 50 damage a hit, what, eight? Right, six. Wow, math. Six basic attacks that you can now take. Um, and that compounds because that six, that, you know, the time that it takes to take six basic attacks Six basic attacks, you're building up your passive and regen. So that is very strong, very, very key um, to the build there. Very nice indeed. After that, we get the Spear of the Rift Runner because we are focusing on crit on this build because I'm feeling like attack speed is really, uh, has really a lot of diminishing returns with Chimera, um, with his Q and etc. I wanted to focus on crit, see how that went. I think it went pretty damn well. So there's Spear of the Rift Runner, as many one-point cards as possible. I don't have another one-point wound. I, mean, I only have one, for Pete's sake. So I would love to get a... Um, I'd like to get three wounds, really, because we have that damage from the Guardian's Ward, the damage from the Brawler's Key, with more one-point uh, damage upgrades, we would have put done them there. So at this point, we get that crit. So that's a 9% plus that 6 is 15% already. And what, we're at 15 card points? Crazy. After that Spear of the Rift Runner, we go for Flashfire Piston. It's a two-point card. Again, I would prefer to have three minor kinetics. Um, actually, yeah. No, I wouldn't. I would get, yeah, sorry. I would get two minor strikes just like it did, and then a one-point uh, minor strike. So getting a lot of one-point minor strikes is going to be very important for this build. Um, so there you go. There's the two minor two minor kinetics, and I would get another minor strike in there as well. Uh, that I mean, that's a five-point card. That's crazy. So there you go. After this, we go into our first tanky card, and that is either this Thorned Greenweave or the Spiked Bone Plate. Now, you can see that we have a Tempered Plate and a, splint par 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 but a Splinter Bark Vest. Um, these are more just really focused cards on tank splinter bark vest not so much um so why are we getting these uh, damage and resistance cards in the mid game because uh the damage is going to hopefully impact um our role as a damage dealer more so than that health um i mean that does depend on i guess the the situation of the of the match, but I think that's just getting this damage and the guard at the same time in the mid game is going to really focus us into our purpose. And if we can fulfill that purpose expertly, I think that would be better off than going for this tempered plate and the splinter bark, bark splinter bark vest. Blah, 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 blah. There you go. So you get one of these, and then you go back and get the impact hammer. Uh, just because we want to split up when we get our tankiness, uh, we don't necessarily need to get the off resistance so quick. So we go back to the impact hammer. This impact hammer, as you can see, has better upgrades than the Spear of the Rift Runner. Uh, so we do exactly that. Replace Spear of the Rift Runner with this impact hammer, increasing our damage. And then we go into the off, the off resistance, the off tank, um, resistance and get either the Thorn Greed or the Spike Bone Plate and finish off 
basically kind of finish off the build. Like that's it. At this point, we're really, really um, replacing stuff. After we finish the tankiness, tankiness, then we go into the Red Eye Nitro. It's not even in my notes here, but I did get it for a reason that I did do the math. And I know that works. I just forgot to write that down. The Red Eye Nitro replaces our Flash Fire Piston. Um, you can see that the Flash Fire Piston has that attack speed. This Red Eye Nitro still has attack speed, but we want that crit. We want to, uh, that really at the end game, flip to kind of, you know, really go into that crit focus. So here is the Red Eye Nitro with that two major wounds. Uh, that's 19, that's 18, 21% crit chance uh, along with our impact hammer of 12 and three is 15 plus the, what did I say? 15 plus the, 21, 36, 36%. Ah, that's okay. That's okay. Um, I prefer to get more crit, to be honest with you, but this is just how the math works. I think that's okay. Um, that, 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 that's a build. I mean, I, I suppose we could, here in this Red Eye Nitro, we could, you know, uh, go for a major wound again, three major wounds, uh, because that would, that would give us 11% attack speed. Um, sure, sure. We didn't get there, we didn't see, but I think, yeah, so let's do that. Three major wounds there. That is going to bump us up to, what did I say? 44% crit chance. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And then at the end game, when all of that damage is really, really flying around, the carries are really bumped up in the end game, that's when we need more tankiness, and we can afford to, with that crit chance and all the damage that we'd be getting, to kind of sacrifice that a bit. So we go with a tempered plate to, um, to replace the... Ooh, yeah, the tempered plate to, to replace the spiked bone plate, and the splinter bark vest to replace the thorn green weave. This splinter bark vest is why I did this build because, um, look at this active for six seconds on hit with a basic attack. So use your Q and then get five basic attacks instantly. Basically, shred thirty-two physical armor for, from the target for four seconds. Stacks up to five times. Perfectly works with this Q. You shred instantly one hundred and sixty physical armor insane so going for that tanky support pop pop the splinter bark vest go straight in onto the the support the tank you can shred them to bits crazy 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 i was really looking forward to getting this card um, but it just didn't really happen the end game when everybody really has that armor be absolute monstrous there is a build i've talked for too long really i should just shut up there is a build. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know down in the comments what you think. If you like the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. Please share it with the community. And of course, subscribe. If you enjoyed the video or you found it useful, I'd like to do it for you again in the future. Please consider following me on Twitch, on Twitter, and of course, uh, donating. I really would appreciate that. I have a lot of stuff. The very crude green screen that I have behind me. So you can now see probably really all the best so if you'd like to help me out that would be absolutely incredible so until next time like always take care